dude, thank you so much for being on, man. I mean, hey, no uh, worries, man. Thanks for having this, is, this is a great start to the new year. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, day, hopefully it'll be one. Yeah. Day, day one. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a one. strong start. We'll see. We'll see what happens further down the line, but it's, it's yeah. a pretty strong start. My, but, my bad joke is I hope that 2021 is at least 25% better than 2020. I don't yeah, know if I'm, that counts as a joke. I don't even know. St- I know it's, it's good. It's like statistically it's, it's a, it's a mathematical joke. You don't really get those too often. They don't, no, they don't no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, what are you what, what what are you up to right now? You're just you're just hanging out. We did, we were just talking before. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm in my parents' backyard um, with their dog. They've got a dog named Molly here. I don't know if you can really. There, yeah, come come say hi to the Molly, right there. Yeah, she's a, she's a walker hound, which is kind of like a a slim beagle. Very nice, trim, yeah. trim, a trim. Yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> uh, she's very energetic. Yeah. She just kind of runs aimlessly around this backyard, barks at things that I can't see. I won't say that they don't exist, but I can't see what she's barking at. But yeah, there's there's always that weird thing of like, oh, dogs see, uh, I mean, animals see other things that uh, humans don't see, which is which is an odd concept if you, if, if you think about it. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess she definitely smells things that I can't smell, um, which is also good. Yeah, which is good. It's, yeah, my dad is actually a nose deaf he can't smell a thing which is kind of good for his occupation he's a veterinarian um so he spends a lot of time with uh nasty nasty creatures <laughs> and uh yeah he can't smell a thing i mean that's that's good that's good for that line of work yeah absolutely he used to bring home just large hefty duffel bags full of uh, horse manure just to use for compost purposes um and i can smell a thing yeah and it's- sometimes like you know he dropped me off school and there would just be the slight odor of horse manure on me and uh, i have to suffer the consequences of that you know and you say whatever i mean my dad can't smell it and you should just ignore it because it's not yeah, the big deal <laughs> exactly it's what, what is a smell anyway yeah exactly so tim we we met i, I want to say yeah 2000 early 2019 I would, yeah, that sounds about right. I, yeah. I would say at the, at the last Peso show, that, that, that was great. I remember being back there and we yeah, were just my, my chatting. My Barrett was playing with them. Yeah. I, to go see, I went to go see Barrett do his thing. And uh, yeah, and we were chatting. Yeah, I, I, I remember. I was like, oh, what, what band are you? And you're like, oh, OCs. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard of those guys, I think, once or twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we, we exist in the world. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys are. Around. I mean, uh, pretty under the under the radar, floating under there. No, yeah, <laughs> you guys are doing around. great, great stuff. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and uh, flatworms too, and sick alps, oh, all, all all the above. I, oh, it's thanks, great man. track record. It's perfect. Oh, thank you, thank you. But I wanted to know was was sick alps? Was that one of the first bands that you were in? Uh, no, I played in Ty Siegel's band before that for a little less than two years uh just bands in and around san francisco um of of just kind of all stripes uh punk bands hardcore bands uh rock stuff um yeah just a lot of different groups here and there um very nice yeah what what uh at what what time frame is this are we looking at 2007 ish uh well, I moved to San Francisco, I believe it was 2003. Oh, wow. Um, and so I just started playing in just random bands here and there. Uh, I worked at Amoeba Records uh, for a number of years, and that was kind of a great musical education. And also, it was just a great way to meet um, other folks that played music. Um, I ended up playing music with a bunch of folks that I worked with there. Um, yeah um i mean modesto where i'm from is a is a small town and i just kind of wanted to see what else was out there and so san francisco is a good place to go to just meet like-minded folks i mean i was just going there all the time anyway just to see shows and stuff so um yeah just found myself there and ended up playing music with a lot of folks that's not a bad place to end up i'll tell you that (laughs) no it's it's a good place and it's close enough to my family and um yeah it's not not a bad place to find yourself for sure not not at all yeah so yeah. 
I mean, it, it seems like from, from what I understand is that uh, an Amoeba gig, even in LA or Berkeley or San Francisco is a very coveted job, you know? Like yeah. It, I think like at the time, like getting a job there, it was, it was rather competitive. Um, and I had an in through a roommate. Um, and so he got me a job and, um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was honestly, it was one of the best jobs I had. I mean, I, I met some amazing folks that I'm, you know, still friends with like 15 years later. Um, you know, and one of my really close friends that I met there, like, I don't know, it just, there was just some, some great people and it was just a real musical and social education in a lot of ways. Like, I was just like a small town idiot and like I was just exposed to like a lot of cool folks with cool ideas and cool ways of seeing the world and yeah it was it was eye-opening and yeah yeah so I mean that that really uh did that help at all unlock like kind of the um the scene that was going on over there because you were working at Amoeba yeah yeah um yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, um, I didn't know uh, Dwyer at the time, but I mean, I would see, he has a, you know, he's a very distinct presence and I would see him always coming in, like peddling his wares, you know? And um, and I worked with this guy, uh, Jigme Bear, who was, uh, he was playing an earlier incarnation of OCs. He was playing drums at the time. And then we started playing music together. We briefly had a band, uh, him, his girlfriend and myself. Um, and yeah, I mean, I worked with this guy, Shade Sarton, uh, this amazing bass player who was playing in a bunch of different bands at the time. And it spanned the Fresh and Only's was kind of like a, a band, of, I think like at least half the band at the time were Amoeba employees. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, I don't know, it was, Amoeba was a great place to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I only went to that that one once. And they, they had a pretty good selection. I, I didn't, I was just kind of browsing around. I, I picked up a few stuff. I was like, oh, great. You know, uh, I, I just never really do any, I mean, limited record shopping uh, in general, but especially if I'm on like a, a trip, I, I, I don't really pick up anything, but I, I picked up a few things. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, smaller than the LA one, but still some good stuff in there for sure. Yeah. I mean, I remember going up there when I was younger and I mean, back in Modesto, you know there aren't there weren't many record stores and there was this one record store called uh it was just called the beat it was really small and um and they had a section just for punk rock stuff and it was just like so small it was like 20 cds um and then you go to amoeba and you walk in and there's just rows and rows of cds and lps and you're, you're like, i i just would blank out every time i'd go there because i was just like you know, you're just kind of intimidated by the option of choice. Like there just wasn't that much available for me before. And then you'd walk in a place like that and there's just unlimited things and you're, and you don't know what half, well, not half, you don't know what like 99% of the things you're looking at are. And I don't know. I mean, but that exposure is important. You're like, what's this all about? What's that? What's this? What's that? And then you, I mean, oh, of course, as you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just unlocked so much stuff. What was yeah. some uh, early influences of yours, though? I mean, speaking of uh, picking up music. Uh, like, like real formative stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think skateboarding really just kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things. Like skateboarding videos, you know, that's where you'd first hear Black Flag or The Misfits or things like that. Um, you know, kind of like 90s backpacker style hip-hop stuff um so that was real formative um yeah i don't know i mean a lot of a lot of there's a lot of staples in that like um and you can kind of go from there you know if you like black flag is a great starting place and then from there you know you can discover like saccharin trust and blast and so on and so forth um yeah. Um, yeah. Music and I, skateboarding, it's always intertwined, it seems. I mean, yeah. in, in all facets of it, in all eras of it. Yeah. And I really liked um, record labels that would include a catalog of their merchandise in, in the record. Yeah. So I remember um, 
I was maybe like 14, 15 years old, and I got the Descendants Liveage record, and it had like the SSD catalog, and you just, you know, unroll this thing, and it's just like this unbelievable scroll of all these new titles that that you've never heard of, and it's like, oh God, I've got so much catching up to do. And we open it up, Minutemen, Who's Cure Do, all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Black Flag, of course, SST. Yeah, and you just discover like, oh, Black Flag has way more records than just the first four years and everything went <laughs> black. Like, there's there's a lot to catch up on here. Those are the two you always see. It what I always see every time. I mean, like, it's not every time I'm going straight to Black Flag, but it's they're always there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then sometimes you'll see like the process of weeding out or something like that, you know, or uh, or jealous again. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could you could start with the process of weeding out, but that might. Uh... That might be a little confusing. Oh yeah, it's a it's a definite uh, left turn. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Still, still good though. Still, good. what's what's the best era? Do you think of Black Flag, uh, frontman wise? Oh man, I think I'm in the minority on this, but I I always loved Des Cadena's voice the best. Okay, wow, yeah, yeah. I just I love the gruffness. No, it's uh, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was there's something about him. I don't know. I, I think I'm definitely in the minority on this. I think that's a left field statement. I mean, I'm I, I'm not I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just I'm saying that that is a uh, I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting when you were, she has, you when you said that I was like okay, Ron Rice. Like that's what I thought that you were gonna yeah, say. Yeah, or, or Ron think, Rice, yeah, Ron right? and Keith. I think those are just the two that I think everyone gravitates towards. But for some reason, like Des's voice, I was like, that is awesome. I think I just also never heard a person sound like that. Like. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, definitely. You could almost like imagine Keith and Ron's speaking voice, but then Dez's voice just sounds like something else. And I guess that maybe it was like a template for hardcore in a lot of ways. Like, just that voice just pushed to the point of uh, being overdriven or something. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then there's this other guy. What's his face? Uh, I want to say it was like Henry, Henry something. Henry something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Henry. Uh, Henry Ford? I don't know. Henry Ford. That's that's what yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his name. <laughs> I think he had like a brief foray in uh, auto making, but then got into hardcore or something. I don't know. Yeah, it was a weird transition, but you know, it's you know, it's whatever. You got you got to start somewhere. I think. Yeah, life is a journey, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So okay, so so you're playing shows in San Francisco, and you're yeah. and you're, and you're getting involved in all these people. Um, so. I, this is the time that Ty was up there, yes? I was, I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah. Nice. And did yeah. you, you you played on some of his records, no? Uh, Melted, yeah, I'm on, right? the, I'm on the Melted record, and then there's a live record called Live in Isle 5, and I'm playing on that one, yeah. Okay, very, very nice. Just bass, yeah? Uh, Just bass, yeah. I don't think I played guitar on any on anything, yeah. I think it was just all bass. Yeah, what, what, uh, was it originally guitar that you were learning and you're like, okay, I'm just going to pick up the bass or was it vice versa? Um, well, yeah, I started on guitar when I was like 12 years old. Um, these four guys, no, three of the guys in my, um, sixth grade class, like we just started, we decided we we're going to start a band. And so, um, what was the name guy, of it? What was the name? Well, we wanted to call it orange parts, but we never practiced. Yeah. Never practiced. Why um, would you? You're in sixth grade. You're just living off yeah, your balls. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, me and this guy, Matt Wyatt, we both decided we were going to play guitar. My buddy Adam was going to play bass. My buddy Mike was going to play drums. Um, and so I just started learning guitar. The band never happened. It was all, it was just a conceptual idea that just never really took form. Um, it's it's a good name. It's a good name. It's a good name. It, I mean, I think we'll name. we'll one day in our late thirties we'll we'll get it started again. Because that's I, when I, it's I, time to shine on that, you know. I mean, totally. You, you get the idea when you're young, and then it 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 comes to fruition when you're older. That's just that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I hope I hope. Yeah, that that seems that seems like the course it's gonna take. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that, that. I mean, that's awesome. So that's, I mean, that's really young though, to have those inclinations of, uh, all right, I, I want to play some music. Yeah. And then, um, when I started taking guitar lessons, I believe when I was like 13, um, I had a guitar teacher who was, he was kind of like a sunset strip rocker, but the Modesto California version. So it's a little, uh, a little more bootleg way sicker way way sicker yeah way yeah. small rad. town the small town sunset strip rocker is definitely the uh the person to learn guitar from but he's also a religious guy 
and my parents are very religious um so we actually had to pray before uh we started guitar lessons which was a little little strange for me um, and i heard that that is the uh that's what you guys do in the ocs now right i mean john yes. leads the prayer yes yeah yeah lays his hands upon us and then yeah we start the show um yeah. take the sacrament and go forth yeah, yeah that's 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 it yeah so sometimes Dan will do it, right? Or or Paul, or, or somebody uh, leads it, right? Yeah, whoever's moved by the spirit will. Okay, okay. So you guys yeah, take yeah. turns. Cool. Okay, just making sure. I mean, it's, and more, it's more that the spirit takes turns and who it occupies, really. But that's like a, a a a tidbit that nobody really knows about. I mean, everybody knows about the band, but nobody really knows about the inner workings of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now now you know we're uh, we're fueled by the spirit. So. Yeah, Dan. Dan, let me know about that when I interviewed him. He was he was he was very upfront about it. So that was that was neat. Yeah, he's a. How would you describe Dan's religious convictions? He's more on the Pentecostal tip. He is more of a speaking in tongues kind of guy. I'm more of a, I guess, reconciled Methodist. Um, I guess this is just religious jokes that aren't really that no, funny. No, I, no, I, no, I, I, I didn't want to cut you off. I, I wanted you to keep on going. I wanted you to go ah. through the whole list. No, it was good. It was good. I liked it. The, the listeners will like it, all 10 of them. Ah. I'm like, that was a good joke. <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, I, hope they're, I hope they're all religious. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're, you're going to be getting some emails. I'm just telling you that right okay. now. But perfect, that's perfect. whatever. We'll deal with that when the time comes. <laughs> so so you're up there in San Francisco. You're playing shows. Where are you playing shows at? DIY venues? or, or Yeah, the, yeah. Apple? Um, I think the chapel wasn't actually existing when I was, when I was up there. Um, yeah, so shows, I mean, there's a lot of DIY spots or sort of DIY. I mean, just kind of places that would kind of give you free reign to book your own shows. Um, there's this great place, the Lipo Lounge um, in Chinatown, where you could just book shows in their basement and anything went. I mean, this guy, Justin Flowers, was booking shows there. Um, I remember at one point in time, he had a show that was scheduled in, in the South of Market area that got shut down. And so people were showing up at this place that got shut down, but he moved the show to the Lipo Lounge and he was literally just transporting people from the original South of Market location for the show to the new location for the show, He's just transporting him in his van, which I thought was really cool. Uh, my buddy Robbie was doing these uh, generator shows for a little while um, underneath overpasses. Um, he did one in Sutro Baths, which was like um, it's like Sick Alps and Meth Teeth, kind of before my time in Sick Alps. Um, there were shows at the Hemlock. Um, yeah, uh, Thrill House. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a bunch of different places back then. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I mean that that's a lot just off the top of the head. That was like six. So obviously, was six? You, I, I wasn't counting. It was like I, six. I I'm not saying I was counting. I'm just saying like that sounded like six places. <laughs> yeah, I I just had coffee, so I think it's gonna make the gears in my brain turn a little bit faster it'll kick in it'll kick in it'll yeah. kick in yeah yeah I definitely just got a very late breakfast here too so we're we'll be firing all cylinders in just a second you're getting, that's good it's the new year you got it it's gonna take a second yeah. to kick in i get it it's exactly fine. exactly i know you're, you're thinking oh this is i'm talking to this really slow guest right now but i mean no give me no. some time and i will be We'll be picking up. You'll be you'll be impressed by my wit. I swear. I, I think it's been great. We got the religious jokes done. We got that out of the way. I mean, we're <laughs> we're going in a good direction. I think I think, hey, I we're, think we're good. There. I'm on I'm on board. I'm on board. All right, uh, all right. All right, man. So so you're playing in San Francisco. You're you're, you're doing all this. Um, and then uh, so so then you you joined Sick Alps up there. Yes. Uh yeah yeah. I was playing with I was playing with Ty for a little bit. Um. And then Mike Donovan from Sick Alps would, um, every once in a while, he would just kind of like show up at practice and sing backup vocals. And um, yeah, I always liked him. Mike's, Mike is an amazing person, very personable, very funny. Um, and yeah, one day I just got this call from him being like, hey, would you be interested in playing the Sick Alps? And I was like, absolutely. I mean, I, they had, I think at that time they had just two full lengths. They had USEZ and Nap Asylum. And I really, really loved both of those records. Um, 
obviously I was very stoked to be playing with Mark. Um, to, to jump in on that. Yeah. Were you, yeah. so w- did you join it and then were you writing it out till it, till it ended? Yeah. Yeah. I was in the, the last two and a half years of a uh, sick ops existence. I was a part of. Yeah. Uh, it was like 2011, 2013. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. 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 And then it just kind of petered out or how, how did you get that news that it was just done? Um, well, I think Mike had been doing the band for a good amount of time. I think in his mind, it, it had just kind of run its course. I mean, also at this point in time, towards the very end, he was the only one living in San Francisco. I was living in LA. Uh, Barrett, who you met at that show, who was playing with the pesos, he was playing guitar as well. Um, and this guy, Douglas Armour, he was playing drums in the group. Um, he, he was living in LA. So um, I think he was maybe tired of the, uh, the commute down here for practicing and just, I think he just wanted a new, a new thing in his life. I mean, I think in his mind, like Sig Alps had just ended. It was, it had run its course and yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, as, as these things do, I mean, everything has yeah. its own. Yeah, time time course. frame yeah and i think it's yeah if, if you feel like it's run its course i think it's better than trying to continue with something if, especially if your heart isn't really into the into it anymore oh absolutely yeah definitely um so yeah. i mean wh- when did you make the move to from uh san francisco down to la what what drove you down there um that was around 2012 when i moved um i'd spent about nine years in san francisco I just kind of like felt like I was just spinning my wheels a little bit there. Um, and my good buddy Robbie had moved down there. And my good buddy Will. And we had a group together as well. Um, and I think, I don't know, personally, I, I, the times when I'd been down to L.A., it just felt a little more like home, like a place I could grow old in. Whereas San Francisco just kind of had this Never Neverland vibe. Like, I, I didn't want to be, like, a guy in my, like, late 40s with, like, roommates. And, you know, you got to wake up in the morning and rush to the bathroom to get the hot water before your other roommate get, tries to take his shower. I, I just didn't want to be in that vibe. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a good thing and, to aspire to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, no, no shame in those that live that way. But, um, yeah, and also, I mean, the weather in San Francisco, I think, really – affected my moods too um i realized that like for me sunshine is pretty essential for mental health and i think the fog in san francisco kind of kind of brought me down a little bit um you know where you should try is seattle i heard it's i mean that seems right <laughs> <for> alley <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean both of my sisters live there and one really of my sisters just said that like it, that she felt horribly depressed living up there um I think, yeah, I think the weather just really affected her. And I, I, I can relate to that. I mean, I feel good. I feel good being outside. I'm talking to you outside right now. Yeah. I mean, and, and you, you, you look like you're doing good. You got the jacket on, right? <laughs> I got the jacket on. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to wear a jacket. It's, it's so nice. <laughs> I, mean, I guess depending on the weather. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, <laughs> if the weather permits is what I'm saying. Yeah, not like I'm, I'm not one of those dudes that just wears a jacket every day. There are those guys. And there are those guys. Good, bet and that's, better that's for like, luck to like you. Nick Cave, though. I mean, you got to be. That's got to be a whole package. You can't just wear the jacket. You've got to no. have. You got to have the hair. You got to have the slacks. It's a whole ensemble. It's it's a, yeah, it's a whole totally. thing. It's it's like being goth. You got to like if you're in it, you're in it. Like you're committing to it, 100. percent Yeah, it's a it's a total commitment, and it has to be the and it has to be the total package as well. You can't just be partially goth, you know. Or being in like insane clown posse, like that is just it's just how you live your life. You're not you gotta be 100 yes. percent in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no, yeah, no praise for partial jugglers. No, it's no full throttle or nothing else. Man. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly right. You took the words yeah, out of my yeah. mouth, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> after Sick Alps, what was the next uh, music music project? Well, I, I'd actually been playing in a group uh, called Wet Illustrated with. Uh, Robbie and Will for a good a good amount of time like it kind of um I was doing that with um during the time that um that I was playing with Ty and the time that I was playing with Sick Alps 
so I was still doing that. And then um, a buddy from San Francisco was staying with me. We went out to get breakfast in the morning and we ran into Ty and Danae, his wife, um, at the place we're getting breakfast and, and we're just chatting. And Ty was like, you know, John moved down here and he's looking for a bass player. Um, and he's like, you should, you should hit him up. And so like, I, uh, I sent John a text being like, Hey man, uh, are you looking for a bass player? I'd love to jam with you sometime. And he was like, Oh shit, buddy. Uh, let me, I'll send you some tunes. And then, uh, I get an email <laughs> with literally like, it was like 30 tracks to learn. <laughs> Yeah, was I, I? I'm assuming uh, what what kind of sh what era was this that he was like sending you these tracks like uh, 2009 to whatever or yeah it was it was like more of the rockin' era like the uh, like the era of the band when like Mike Shona joined. Mm -hmm. Um, so it it's was a good yeah, it was, era. It's a great era. Oh, it's a great era. And like sure. living in San Francisco at that time, like I kind of saw OCs like go from being like a really cool band to like becoming like a force like um they just kind of became this like really monstrous live band and that um that era of of john and Petey, bridget and mike and lars sometimes too um yeah so he sent me tracks from that era um and that that's my, like a great era i mean help yeah, is amazing yeah. let me just say that i mean that's that was like my first forte and it it was it was that that album i was like whoa that's this is great you know yeah really and truly i mean and kind of living in san francisco at that time and and just seeing what became of the group um you know watching it happen in real time was was really cool and and you know seeing these shows like you know, I, I was seeing them when Jigme was playing drums in the group and like, you know, there'd be like 10 people there. And, you know, eventually the shows just got more and more packed and like John was booking shows at this place, the Eagle and uh, the bar right up there in San the bar, Francisco. Yeah. 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 He he'd do these shows on Thursday nights and, you know, eventually the Eagle just became just packed with folks like it was um yeah it was kind of amazing um it was uh it was a primarily a, a gay bar correct um yeah yeah it was, it was a gay bar um like kind of like a like a a, le a leather daddy kind of bar mm -hmm. um, gotcha and they were yeah they were super receptive to john doing shows you know um and I think like I think the uh the regular bar patrons were you know, they weren't like turned off to like these young rock folks coming in and watching yeah. the gigs and and you know, there's always that overlap too between the regulars there who also like to rock. So Yeah, that that's always funny to see, like if you go into a bar that you're not I mean it's like a real local bar and everybody knows each other in that bar and it's like who the fuck are you? Like, that's always an yeah, interesting yeah. dynamic. Like, I'm, I'm all right. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to go into the corner here. Like, you know, I'm not trying to bother anybody. That's, it, it, it's always a weird thing. But I like being in that situation sometimes. Like, all right. Like, I'm, I'm a cool guy, you know? Yeah. I mean, at that time in San Francisco, it was really, I think it was still kind of like an outsider city. So, I mean, people are pretty accepting of, uh, of a lot of things. Sure. Um, yeah. Still even i mean i i yeah i don't really i don't really know i don't really have much of a connection to san francisco anymore but um how much were you paying for rent when you were up there like when you first moved up there what was it about 500 like? bucks for a room <laughs> like a little a little more a little less um yeah it was it was just a different time oh John. yeah definitely i mean price wise what you just said that's insane that's yeah. insane for la too i mean uh, at the, it's crazy yeah i mean when i first moved to la i was subletting from somebody in my room then was like um yeah it was under 500 get out of here man that which is i insane. thought was amazing because yeah. like, at that time in san francisco as i moved down like people were paying like 
you know, 800. And I was like, oh my God, that's just way too much. It's way too much. It's way too much. It's highway robbery. That floored then, you. Um, 800 floored you. 800, yeah, San Francisco. 800 was the tipping point. I was like, I can't believe someone paid $800 for a room. You're insane. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I worked with a guy who had his own studio apartment for 800. And I was like, oh, that's, that's worth it. That's worth it. You got your own place. That's, that's worth it. But, oh my gosh. That's, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Why would he pay that much for it? That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's tough, tough to say. I mean, you got you to gotta live the life that you want to live <laughs> and whatever the price is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, so you moved down here. I moved you down asked, here. You asked John, who, do you, who did you replace? Was it Petey? Did you replace Petey in the band? Uh, well, I th- you know, John had moved to L.A., and I think the band had sort of just gone on a hiatus. Um, I don't – I think he was just trying to just – just do a whole new thing um so yeah i don't i um i guess you could say that i replaced pd but i think it was more a thing of just the the whole band was just changing it was like a break and then you were like the new blood w- within it yeah yeah he was jamming with uh this guy nick murray um great drummer great drummer great drummer Un- great unbelievable band. drummer and um and when I started playing with John and Nick and then uh, this guy Emmett Kelly was originally going to play second guitar, but I think that just like, wasn't in the cards. I, I've heard that name. What, uh, what else has he done? Oh man, he's done a lot of things. He's a super talented dude. His, his group was called the Cairo gang. Okay. Um, he plays, he plays with Ty Siegel now. He played with Bonnie Prince, Billy. Um, wow. He's played in a bunch of groups. He's got, um, he's got this band called the double um, with this guy, um jim white who played in dirty three and that group uh they're basically just playing like the Bo diddly beat but i think they add like one extra beat to it um but it's cool it's just kind of like a, a that's vamping that, on that like dum, that dum, sounds dum, quite dum, interesting dum, dum. yeah yeah i think it's i think basically the concept is instead of going like dump to dump but dump 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 it's like dump but dump but dump 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 but dump oh dump. gotcha like yeah beat. Yeah, but it's it's super cool. For a while, they had this guy uh, playing sax over it. Um, it was really amazing. At one point in time, Emmett and I were roommates, and he was practicing um, in the garage with that group. And like folks from the neighborhood would just come by and be like, "This is awesome! <laughs> this is so cool!" That that's such an interesting reaction because usually when you're playing music at your house, that that's not it's not all right. You know, it's like a noise complaint. Da, 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 I think da, da. it just honestly though I think it depends on the quality of the group I mean they were a great band I've had to call the cops on Mick Jagger multiple times and I will continue to do it oh you should you should it's just yeah you should and, uh, I actually He's... mentioned him on the on the last episode too you know what oh, really? I'm gunning for him yeah wow. I'm gonna take his place yeah what did, what did you say about him on the last one <laughs> I, I forgot what it was it was with uh, uh Shannon Shannon Shaw of uh Shannon oh, okay yeah 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 I forgot. She she had a major beef with him too. <laughs> oh wow! No, I'm just I, kidding. Shannon was great, and and I, yeah, I she's a sweet lady. It was it, it was so nice of her to to do it. You know, she's. I I heard that Mick Jagger in his 70s still runs eight miles a day. I heard that, that too. Was, that's that's insane. Who is seeing this? Who is who is vouching for this? That's, that's true. Saying. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. I I, I usually I. Maybe I'm a very trusting individual and I take people at their word, but maybe he's exaggerating. Maybe he's walking eight blocks a day and not actually running eight miles. But I even if he is running, that. there's there's no way he's running on the street. There's no way he's like, oh yeah, I'm just Mick Jagger running. There's no way. I there's totally. flaws in the story totally. and I don't believe it. But he seems like the kind of person though that would just like he would just have some amazing estate out in Wales. Oh sure. That may or may not have like a like a a full-on tractor on the backyard. I mean, that'd be I a bizarre way to spend your money, but <laughs> it's all fitness. But meanwhile, and you look at Keith Richards, and he's smoking, drinking, doing whatever he wants to do. I mean, and they're both still kicking, which is great. Uh, so it's like, what, what, why is Mick doing this? You know, you could just do the exact <laughs> opposite, and it'd be the same thing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but maybe it's whatever you can do to get through the day. You know, maybe I guess maybe yeah. Keith's. Uh, it's all uh, it's a way of escape or maybe a way of, I don't know, dealing with the world. Maybe for Mick, 
saying that, saying that you ran eight miles is his way of dealing with the world. A liar. Know. He's a liar. <laughs> I'm saying it right now. This is breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> well, you heard it here first. I'm on the forefront of the breaking news. I'm, I'm calling yeah, the Jagger. Yeah. I'm actually supposed to have him on tomorrow, so we'll, we'll be discussing this. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. tell him that I believe he runs eight miles. I'll tell okay. him. But I, I thought that was really impressive. I mean, I'm in my late 30s, and I go running, and if I top, if I top a certain number, my, my knees hurt. Um, but can what are, you, you, I mean, are you running eight miles per day? Or, I mean, no, when you run? No, I'm, I'm definitely not running eight miles a day. But, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do like five. And... Um, but I won't do that every day. I'll do it. Like Five is reasonable for him, but he's saying he does eight. Uh, he does eight every day. No, I'm not. No, I, don't I don't buy it. buy it. I'm not buying it. No, no way. I mean, at the same time, though, I'm sure he has the ac access to uh, the greatest running shoes money can buy. Oh, it. sure, sure. New balances for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those, I, I those splurged. Ones. <laughs> I, I splurged. I bought some Hoka's. I, I've never heard right. of that. What, what, what is it? What? It's, a, it's a treat for your feet. Are they it's good? Supposed, they're supposed to be pretty good. Are you rocking um, them right now? Is that what you're rocking no, right no, now? No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not rocking them right now. All right. I, I don't really like to wear running shoes unless I'm running. But. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you see that sometimes. It's like people just, just wearing them. It's like, all right, jeans? You're running in jeans? All right. Like that's that's oh, yeah, one yeah. men's way of doing it. Sure. Yeah, totally. Totally. I mean <laughs> – I, res I respect that though, and I think, I think you become less conscious of what you wear as you get older. I think uh, you care less about judgment. Um, sure. I mean, yeah, my, my dad will wear things that don't match whatsoever, and he doesn't care. Like he's uh, judgment does not phase him, and I, I I respect that. I I aspire towards that. Yeah, are you do, do you feel like you're getting there that way yourself? You know? Uh, I don't know. I I, I struggle to match clothing cuz I I'm colorblind. Um so I kind of just stick to the same color scheme most of the time. You're looking dapper right now, man. I I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that right now. The, oh, the, thanks. the hat <laughs> looks good with the jacket. It looks good. I'm telling you. I would not lie to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I think these are like two different shades of blue and I think I think they're an acceptable pairing. Yeah, it's good. I it's think. fine. Yeah. Nobody's, yeah. nobody's going to trash you for that. Yeah. I, I hope not. But if they, if they do, you know, you can't get phased by that. Yeah, heck you them, gotta, you right? You've got to think this. What's, what type of person would trash somebody for that? You know? That's, that speaks more about them than me. It's, that's true. That's, that's a very diplomatic way of doing that. It's a, yeah, it's good. That's, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I would though. I would trash you for that. <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's okay. No, no, no. Yeah, it's that's okay. kind of guy I am. Yeah, I mean, I call him Mick Jagger. You think I give a shit? I don't. <laughs> I'm a madman, Tim. Hey, that's okay, man. Be, uh, be, be mad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, anyways, okay. So, so you, you learned all these thirty songs. It, it's, these thirty it, songs. Yeah. I, I, you know, thirty is an exaggeration, but I, I, it was. Uh, but I, but I do think. It was over twenty. It was there were there were a lot of songs. I mean, the songs that uh, the band has made, John has made, and everybody. I mean, all incarnations of this. I, I yeah. mean, it's got to span well over what I would say about two hundred. Yeah, I mean, because you guys are on the twenty-first so, yeah. or twentieth studio release, like studio album release, right? Uh yeah, that seems about right. I think. There are, a, there are a good number. I mean, we, we actually put out a fair amount this year. Yeah, um, yeah. What was the um, first uh, album that you played on? Uh, it was a record called Mutilator Defeated at Last. Wow, okay, that's, so th th that was you. Yeah, that's uh, myself and Nick Murray uh, with John and um, uh, Chris Woodhouse Engineering. Okay, it, but it was just the three of you doing that, that whole album? That's a great album. Oh, thank you. I, I believe... I think Bridget came in and did backups for that. Yeah. Really? She's, she's on that album. I think so. I, I don't quote me on that, but um, she's, she comes in and does uh, backups on a number of. No, you heard still. it here. It's that is true. That Bridget is <laughs> I, on I, that manipulator album. Well, let me, should I, should I check? Should I check this? Check it. Yeah. Yeah. All fact right, check so let's, let's go. Let's go to, how would we do this? Would you go to Discogs? I would just text me. John. That's just me. But you know, we all got our <laughs> ways of doing it. <laughs>
but he, he's a busy man. He might not be checking his phone. This will probably provide us with the, the quickest of answers. Then I would check with Bridget. That's the second option. Well, she's in the UK <laughs> right now, so she's, you know, I don't know what she's, she's – Yeah, she's – watching MasterChef or something right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, or the British Bake Off. That, that, yeah. Those show, too. Or Peaky Blinders, too. Oh, There's Peaky a lot Blinders. Of, yeah. Have you checked well, that out? Uh, no. My girlfriend's actually obsessed with a show called uh, Only Fools and Horses, so I need to actually get in on that one. As far a lot, as lot, of, lot of British – a lot, a lot of British stuff coming out. Yeah. Actually, uh, Only Fools and Horses is an older show, but um, but still, yeah, I've got a yeah. lot of catching up. Yeah. You're, you're frozen right now, but it's, it, but it's oh, all right. Frozen. How about that? Oh, there, there you are. There you are. I'm frozen. Oh, yeah, I'm you're doing good. side to side lean. All right. I'm trying to get you some. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bridget appears on this record, according to Discogs. Oh, that's a reliable source. <laughs> I think so. I feel like no, there's yeah. got to be some. Uh, some fact checking here. Yeah. It's sort of a, we call it like a, I just peer, edited a peer the, reviewed. Yeah, I just edited database. the page right now, right when you said that. I, I put it in there. I said, Bridget, please. Oh, oh, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was it was me. It was me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, but that's, that's insane that, uh, that, uh, oh, well, technically all four of you, I played on that album. I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy. Um, but what was, I mean, and, and, were you come you were you bringing your own ideas into that uh into that album yourself john um, was like hey what do you have to compliment this well, i'm thinking about like when i'm trying to think back on the writing process for that record i mean a number of the tunes were just written from jams like um john would have like a riff or something and we would just kind of go from there sometimes nick would have a drum beat sometimes things would just literally start out of complete jams out of nowhere wow i remember uh, we had this we had a song called web on that record that i was just about to ask about that i think that is my favorite uh song hands down on that on that album i mean it's just oh, that's such you. a great one that one came about I and mean, we started there's this the intro to it just like this boom, boom, and we kind of just started doing that one day and then nick picked up this beat and I just started playing this bass line. And a lot of times um, how things will go with OCs from the time I've been in the band is, is John will record stuff that we do, he'll record jams. And then he'll come back and be like, yeah, this, this part's really good. We should do that again. Um, this part's really cool. Let's do that. This part sucks. Don't do that. Um, but I remember like from that jam of the bass line, he was just like, please remember that one. Like, uh, and if you get it, if you forget it, I will murder you. So keep that one. So, <laughs> Like, uh, so we kept that and then, I don't know, it was, it was cool. Like, um, I feel like the chemistry in the group was really great. Um, as we, as we were starting to just write that record, it was, it was cool. Nick is a incredible drummer to play off. Like he's, um, as a, as a bass player, like he's just really great to lock in. He's just, I don't know. There's something about Nick Murray's sense of rhythm. That's, uh, there has to be a chemistry between bass and drums. So, I mean, to make like a yeah, great. Totally, yeah, totally. Totally. And it's, I don't know, this will sound kind of corny, but there are these kind of moments like when you're jamming with people. Um, I guess for me, it's like a moment of extreme chemistry where it's almost like the three heads just become one and you're really just locking into something. And you don't really have to cue each other for changes. It just, everything happens in this really organic, cool way. Um, yeah, definitely. And some of the, you know, on, on, on uh, before the writing of that record, like some of the jams were kind of coming out of something like that. Like just a, the three heads becoming one kind of thing. Yeah. How, how long did it take to, uh, to record it all? Oh, it's, it was very fast. Um, John's a very fast moving guy. And, um, and recording that was really similar. I think Nick and I were there for like maybe a day and a half, but we had been like pretty well rehearsed for everything. Cause we, uh, a lot of those songs, you know, we had, we had toured on and played nightly for, you know, a number of days, you know? So we were, by the time we entered the studio, we were very well rehearsed and prepared. Sure. Um, yeah. So we were able to just go in there and bang it out really quickly. Yeah. I, yeah. And that, that's important for that. Of, of course. I mean, just like no time wasted, just get in there, do it. Yeah. It's done, put it out, yeah. And I think, too, it's, it's good for John, too, because that gives him, once these rhythm tracks are done, 
um, you know, that foundation's laid down and that, that frees him up for a lot of studio trickery, you know, to, and um, gives him the op- opportunity to just add really cool stuff. Which, yeah, to, to throw in what needs to be thrown in. Yeah, do you, so yeah. is that still the writing process to, I mean, today? I mean, the last album that you guys did, what, um, that was a, I, I want to say po- Potion Threat? Or what, what, what is uh, what? Protein Threats. Protein Threats, yeah. That, yeah, there was that, actually, there were a Actually, for that record, there were a, a lot more of John having um, multiple parts written, and he would send me like uh, cell phone memos of like baseline ideas he had for things. He'd be like, "Just learn this for the next practice." Um, you know, a lot of times, like he'll just send me like one thing and be like, "Just learn this," um, or like it'll just you know he'll have a riff and bring it out to practice, or Paul will have a drum beat. But this time, he had a little more um, a little more idea of what he wanted me to do as far as bass stuff went. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a couple songs that did come out of jams. There was one song that was just entirely written by Thomas, the keyboard player, who's been with us for like the last two years almost. Mr. Elevator. Mr. Elevator, yeah. Um, you know, certain songs that would start off with like a, a drum beat idea that Paul had. Um, I feel like, or maybe this is, maybe I'm getting this record confused with the Face Stabber release, but I think Dan had something too, or it was like a drum beat based on, maybe it was like a, I feel like it was like a Trogs single or something that he was like saying had this really cool beat and he kind of brought that in and wow yeah. yeah i i mean you guys are pumping out so much right now it's 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 crazy i mean it, and it's awesome especially for now for like right now it's like great it's like all right here's something new 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 it's great it's 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 honestly great and it's uh it's hard to keep up all right i'm i'm, I'm telling you sim it's well, hard. It's yeah. hard to keep up. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my darndest to to get all the albums you know we're and at, we're uh, at like a, we're at like almost like an arms race with like a guided by voices or something we're just just we're constant just, releases yeah yeah huh. just throwing it out there yeah um my good buddy ralphie for christmas this year he got me uh uh the uh a master's chamber is is worth spending a night in that that album? Oh, okay, that's yeah, yeah, great. I I know it's pre your time, but that's that's mm-hmm. still a good one. And uh, thank you, Ralphie, if he listens to this, hey, which you, I Ralphie. which I know he doesn't because I shouted him out. The last one was Shannon, and he didn't say anything about oh. it. So this is gonna be another uh test if he does. I'm not gonna mention it. Um, Ralphie, Ralphie, prove prove your friendship. Ralphie Garcia, he's he's great. He's helped me out so much, and. uh uh, especially with the podcast, uh, I, I just I was trying to create a new logo for this, and uh, he's really good with um, what's uh, not not Photoshop, but uh, Illustrator. And he was like, I was like, oh yeah, I want this text like in this logo. He's like, yeah, it just took him two seconds to do. I was like, dude, that would have taken me forever to, to learn how to do. So I mean, like, he really is a great guy. He just doesn't wow. listen to the podcast. <laughs> ah. No, but love you, Ralphie. Thank you. Hey, Ralphie, if you are listening, you are loved. Yeah, you are, you are loved. Let it be known. Let it and be Tim, known. Tim loves you too. And, I, and I do. I do. He, he appreciates you buying the DOC's album. Yeah, and I, yeah. I heard about your illustrator skills, and those are, those are rare. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's a great guy. He's a shoe designer. He's, he's good. He's, he's a good man. I'm learning a lot about this Ralphie character. Yeah, he would probably know about your shoes. They, they, uh, what, what are they called? Oh, Hoka's. Hoka's. Yeah, Hoka's. I mean, those aren't those aren't the everyday shoes, you know. No, but you you bust them out every once in a while. Which I'm, is good. I'm running. Ooh. When you're running, the eight miles. Not not eight miles. I'm not I'm not trying to catch up to my buddy Nick. Straight through Detroit, Eminem too. He also oh, does yeah. the eight miles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have I have a confession to make on the Please. on the final battle scene of Eight Mile. I and I don't particularly like that movie i kind of i don't really like eminem's character i feel like he's like a little too quick to anger yeah yes I, I i i get a little weepy every time there's that last that when he, he throws an acapella i just every time like i i don't know what it is it's a it's a it's a moving scene i'm, I'm very embarrassed to admit this but no it throws weepy. you for a spin and if it yeah, doesn't yeah. bring a tear to your eye i mean you're not watching it correctly a mile yeah yeah per- perhaps there's and exhibits in it too, which which is, I feel like a lot is. of people forget about. Um, yeah, exhibit, and he pimped everybody's right on that set. They're like, oh, we're gonna fix it. 
we're gonna take your civic man do you like fish well you're gonna love this we put a fish tank in your back seat like what no way yeah (laughs) what a a concept though what a it's great it's great he's he's for the masses exhibit not so much marshall mathers but uh no 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 (laughs) exhibit (laughs) i mean that could have i don't really know the timeline of eight mile but that but he was working in some sort of auto plant so maybe that was pre pimp my ride exhibit i didn't even think about that yeah that yeah yeah Yeah. but also maybe that gave him the idea he's like you know what i'm gonna work with uh mtv to do this (laughs) i'm gonna pimp these kids rides it's gonna start somewhere yeah (laughs) yeah exactly and it's gonna start in the eight mile of detroit yeah yeah. motor city motor city at one point (laughs) (laughs) really and truly man so Tim, getting getting back to oh, yeah, yeah. To, to to the OCs. So you jumped mm-hmm. in. It was it was still the OCs, if I'm not the mistaken. Yeah, yeah. The OCs. Um, when did it change to O OCs OCS or was it O H S E S first? Um, gosh, I you know to be honest, I don't know. I think uh. I think we dropped the T H E E around the time that the Oric record was released. Mm-hmm. And I've never really asked John about the significance of the name changes. Um, I just go along for the ride. <laughs> but um, I guess at the time, like it was kind of a, a different, I mean, a big shift in the band in a way. Um, we were no longer playing with this guy, Ryan Mutino, who was playing who's playing drums, got this guy, Paul Quattrone, who's still in the group um, to play drums. And we're no longer recording with Chris Woodhouse. So I guess in a way it was kind of a, a, a big change. Um, Paul is in the group and we started recording at the Sonic Ranch in Tort Neo, Texas. Um, so yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe the name change reflected some big shift that happened, but I can't really, I can't really say for certain. That's the speculation on the internet that it's uh, the the changing of people of of members in the group. It it brings oh. on a new ship. I I don't know. Well, I'm asking you because I feel like you would have the most information on this. <laughs> well, I don't I don't think it totally does um, because I mean we we released a record that was called that was OCS as O S E E S, and it was uh, a record that was just uh, John and Thomas. Um, and then we use that same name to release the Protein Threat record and, and stuff since then. Um, and actually one of the records that we released called uh, Metamorphosed uh, is under that name too, but it was actually recorded before, um, before the, uh, the change, the name change. Um, if that makes any sense. No, that um, does. No, I'm, I'm following you. Um, um, are you. Are you notified of the name changes or does it just like kind of... This is what it is now. Like, does, does John uh, no, pull I, you aside I, or no? No, no. I just like, you know, we just show up to practice or just see the record come out as that way. And then we're like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's just how it goes. Yeah. Uh, when you when you were seeing him or uh, John and, and, and whoever else, I mean, Petey, uh, Bridget, mm-hmm. sometimes up, up there in San Francisco, was it the OCs still? Uh, or, I, I mean, yeah, at that was, time as well? It was, still, it was still OCs, yeah. I and mean, it was like um, – I feel like I started seeing them around. They were no longer called OCS. It was called OCs. Uh, Jigmay Bear was playing with them, playing drums at the time. Um, yeah, it was still the OCs, I believe. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it, it's so crazy that, I mean, OCs is the only band that can do that. It's like, we're changing it. We're changing it. We're changing it. And everybody's on board with it. It's like, okay, I, I know. I know that. Yeah, it's yeah. bound to change and I know where to find it. I mean, which is great. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of people who would uh, advise against that. I mean, like just music uh, professionals, like in, in the business that would say like, all right, that's not good for marketing, but I mean, it seems to be working out just fine. You know? Yeah. I, I feel like we don't really pay attention to the rules of the music industry, I guess, in a way. I mean, we don't really think about things in terms of like, you know, record cycles and, and that kind of stuff. We just kind of, we just kind of always done what we want. And, um, 
you know, John's the captain of the ship and we're, we're along for it. And I, I trust his vision. Um, yeah, we just do, just do it how, how our yeah. own way. We're it's wor- it's, it's working. Why change it? I mean, yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. <laughs> um, so you said that the, the first time you went on tour, it was just you, Nick and John playing yeah, yeah. those songs. Then, um, I mean, after, after Nick had left, then is that when Dan came in? Yeah. Dan and Ryan Mutino. Um, so we, uh, um, we recorded, we did a tour in November of 2014. Um, after that tour, Nick was no longer going to play in the band. And we started playing with um, Ryan and Dan. And then, Nick and John and I later, and I think it was January, then we went up to Sacramento to record um, the Mutilator record and then came back and started playing um, with Dan and Ryan, a lot of the songs from Mutilator. And I think we actually started writing for the other records at that time. Um, I think we went to South by Southwest shortly after that. Um, I think that was the year South by Southwest when uh, Bushwick Bill came up and did oh. a song with us. What? Yeah. Bushwick Bill did? Bushwick Bill, yeah. It was a pretty amazing situation. Um, what song was it? Um, so, God, what was the song? Enemy Self Destruct or something like that was the name of the tune that we did. That's a but, great one, yeah. But we were, I think that's the tune we're doing. But um, I, was, I was playing and I see this, this short figure to my left and I look over. And it's, it's Bush with Bill, the Ghetto Boys. And I'm just like, what the heck? And he's like, come here. So like, I'm, I'm playing, and I'm like walking over, and he's just like, I want to sing a song with you. And I was like, oh my God. Uh, and I'm, you know, like, I don't call the shot. So I'm just like, that's, you know, John's the captain of the ship. So I was just like, uh, uh, go ask him. So he literally gets on stage as we're playing and is walking over to John as we're still playing and just like whispering, they're like, I want to do a song for you. And so we're like, uh, he's like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So he gets on the mic and we start playing this tune and he starts rapping. Um, Damn, it feels good to be a gangster over this tune. Over en- enemy uh, uh, self-destruct. I believe that's the tune we're doing. Yeah. yeah. That is a odd combo. I, there's a YouTube video of it. It's, it's there is. Cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I got to check I think that you out. Just look for OCs with Bush and Bill. You'll see it, but it was, it was unbelievable. He has like a, he's a handler with him. Um, who was just over on the side smiling. Cause I guess he does this to a lot of people. Like he would show up at a lot of people's shows and just would want to get on stage and get involved. Um, and usually people say no, but we said, yeah. Why would anybody say no? Oh, you're gone. I can't, can't hear you. Thank, thank all you guys for listening. Tim, you there? Short? Tim, oh, wait, I, I'm I'm so sorry, man. You you froze. Oh, but I froze. Oh, can yeah. you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. I, I'm I'm so sorry. You're saying that um some oh, yeah. people don't let them up uh, up on stage to, to sing, but you but you let them, and uh, and then what happened? I'm so sorry. Oh, I, I was oh. I was so interested in it. Froze. Ah, oh, well, yeah. He um, I guess he was trying to get into other shows and get on stage, and people weren't into that, but we were receptive to it, and this is what his handler was telling me. Um, but as we're loading out, you know, he was, um, he was like, I'm gonna help you guys out. I'm like, uh, no, it's cool, man. And he, and he was like, what, it's because I'm short. We're like, no, 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 nothing yeah. like that. Nothing like that. But I remember he was, he grabbed, uh, Dan's kick drum and he was just like, I can hold this all day. Check oh, me boy. out. And he was just holding the kick drum. He was just like, <laughs> check me out, check me out. And he was just trying to hold it for as long as he could. And it was, it was pretty awesome. How long did he hold it for? Was he a man of his word? He's like, I, he could hold it. He was a man of his way. word. Like, I mean, he was just, I mean, I think Dan ended up just being like, oh, it's cool, man. But it was like, you know, a good 30 <laughs> seconds of him just frozen, just holding this thing up to, you know, as a feat of strength. Uh, um, that is yeah. crazy. That he is very, he, was, he was very sweet. He was like, I hope you guys make money off this. So your children's children's children never have to work. <laughs> he was, he was so cool, man. It was, uh, that is wild. Dude, I mean, th- that was a great thing about South by Southwest is you could kind of like, I feel like music scenes are kind of like 
really, you know, it's closed off from like other, other scenes, but like, I don't know, you would just, you get to interact with like a lot of the cool people from other, other scenes. I mean, I once, I once shared an elevator with Too Short one time. And like, I, I, I get in the elevator and he's just right there. And I, you know, like living in Northern California and in the Bay Area for a while, I was like, you know, Too Short's, like, he's, a, he's a staple. He's That's a, the he's shit. A, That's the shit. Absolutely. And, you know, for a while, like, you know, I would have these hip hop mixes that would play before OCs would play. And I would always have Blow the Whistle on there because that song, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll elevate you a little bit. It gets um, you going. Yeah. But I just, I was like starstruck. Like the elevator opens and it's, it's literally too short. And I was like, and I, I was like, are you too short? And he was like, yes. I was like, <laughs> I'm a big fan, man. He's like, and he just said the word. And I was like, and I asked my name. I was like, Tim. And he was like, and, the, and as we're going down this elevator, another guy gets on. He's like, oh, what's up, short? And, and he was just looked at him and just goes, word. Oh, it was, it was awesome. Bro. That's smooth. That's so, that's what, you, that's awesome. exactly what you want from that guy. You know, just totally, like, totally. Just like, be cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, very, very cool interaction. Like, like, you know not giving you the don't talk to me kind of vibe, but like, you know, you don't not overly engaged. Cause you know, it's you gotta, you gotta keep your guard up a little bit, you know, but Oh yeah. But very, but very cool. That is, very that cool. is awesome. Oh, wow. I, I, I really hope that that Bushwick bill, the OCs video is online. I, I, Oh, it, it was, I mean, I hope, I hope it's that. still there. I hope it's still there. I hope it didn't get uh, wiped off somehow, but. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's insane! I, it's, but I mean, like you've watched this video, like oh shit, I remember that. Like oh yeah, yeah, very fond memories of that moment. That's crazy. Um, has it ever has it ever happened since with anybody else? That was like oh let me. I mean, there's that uh, video of Carson Daly playing drums. Oh, that was before my time. Yeah, um, um they, I, I, that's the only one I can think of that like somebody else like jump jumped on. It's Carson um, Daly of all people. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Um, I mean, this is probably like a little more obscure and less exciting, but um, when, but exciting for me as a, as a big fan of this guy's work, but um, are you familiar with the group, the Tronics? Yeah, uh, vaguely, very vaguely. Okay. Yeah, they're kind of like a 80s UK DIY kind of group, but um, uh, Sick Alps at one point in time, like did a little seven inch of Tronics covers and Mike, uh, struck up a, a friendship with czar jazz the um the main the main guy of the group mm -hmm. and um we played on our last tour we played a show in london and czar jazz came out and we actually did like some songs with him which is wow. really awesome and he was a uh, super interesting guy he was you know telling me he makes his money selling uh dinosaur bones and roman coins on ebay <laughs> <laughs> so totally a totally unique wonderful individual um, that, I, I mean that that's insane even if you are like me and you don't really know much about the tronics but that's i mean that's insane that you like record i mean like that the guy who who was in that band came up and you're like i'm playing one of his songs with him like that's I, that's that's just an insane um feeling i bet i mean that's one in a million it was pretty special yeah yeah was, uh, real real highlight for me yeah definitely uh, yeah I, Flatworms had a similar thing one time. We played the show pretty early on when we started. Um, a buddy Brian set up the show at the Ace Hotel in Palm Springs. Okay, yeah. And 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 he was like, a hey, uh, Grant Hart from Husker Du is also going to play. And Husker Du is just, you know, it's that's, SST. That's, that's that's in the it's in the yeah, it's in the sleeve. Oh yeah. That's a that's a that's a real formative uh, band for me right there, um, and so I was I was beyond jazzed, but um, we get there and it's just Grant, and he asked Justin the drummer um, if he'll play some songs for him. And Justin was just like, uh, "Should we practice first? And he's like, "Nah, just do it." <laughs> and as and as they were playing, he like turns to Justin and is just like, "Hey, can you get your bass boy up here?" And he. <laughs> It's me, and yeah, yeah, so uh, I'm, that I'm is bass boy. that is me. It says it on the tag. You know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm bass boy, I'm and, bass he's, boy. <laughs> and he's just like, you know, will you, 
will you play uh i don't want to know if you're lo- if don't want to know if you are lonely and i was like mm-hmm. and i was like uh what key is it in and he showed me the key and we literally like without rehearsing we played don't want to know if you're lonely terms of psychic warfare uh diane um a couple more of the grant hart husker do tunes and it was I think he played Green Eyes by himself. Yeah, he didn't play that one with us. So it, it was just you and um, Justin and him? Girl Who Lives on Heaven Hill. Yeah, we, we played just a bunch of cool ones with him. Wow. It, wow. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, it was also pretty alienating. Like, um, at the same time, like, the folks at the Ace Hotel were not receptive to what we were doing. I think we are basically playing to Brian, who threw the show the handful of folks are going to the bar, ordering drinks and leaving. And then uh, Will from Flatworms was watching the whole thing for maybe half of it. Like, um, Hey, where'd he go? What, what did he get? He's like, I, I got to get out of here. Or <laughs> what, what? I think he was like, uh, he was kind of in, in a, in a party mode. So he was just kind of like, uh, Will has this alter ego called Bill Jivey, where when he starts drinking the, uh, the flip just switch, uh, the, the switch just flips and Bill Jivey comes out. So he was just in prime time, uh, Bill Jivey mode. And he, um, we all get like that. We all, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Bill Jivey was there. So he was not really into watching us play. He already, he already played. He'd, 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 he'd clocked in, he'd clocked out, you know. He did his job, but it, it was just, it was uh, just you and Justin playing with him though up yeah, there. Yeah. And that was yeah. it. Wow. Uh, by the way, Justin, amazing, amazing. Uh, the babies, Kevin Morby, I, his, his work with them is just so insane. And that's, and I, I just wanted to get to that. Flatworms is great. And you oh, guys just, you. just put out a new album, newish album, at least. Newish a- album, yeah. We, Antarctica. We, Antarctica, yeah. We released that, and we had big plans for the year. My year was like, I don't want to get into like a woe is me story because I feel like everyone's got a woe is me story. But my, my whole year was like, it was just booked up. You know, OCs had, at the time, like I think, I think we had three things lined up and then just more and more things added up. Um, to be released. Um, Flowers. Oh, oh, that's it. That's it. Only three or more albums. Eh, all right. Yeah. Whatever. I think. Yeah. And then Flowers had um, we had Antarctica that came out, and then we had a live album that was in the works, and a, a seven inch. Um, so my year was gonna be pretty booked as far as like touring was going. Um, oh. We're gonna get him back in a second, folks. Hold on. Are you back? Can you hear me? Ooh, the 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 process of Zoom. Is he back? Uh, oh, there you are. You're back. I'm so sorry, Tim. Oh, uh, it's okay. It's I'm so okay. sorry. You left off on the seven inch. You're you're I, and touring oh, the yeah, OCs, yeah. Flatworms. You, you're so super booked up. Go ahead, please, sir. Super booked up, and then as you know, there's a, a virus that came along and changed everything. Never heard of it. No, Never no. heard of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Doesn't ring a bell. On. Yeah. I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm out there living in the world, but there's nobody there. Um, no, but, um, but you yeah, should write it, that it, down, write that down. Tim. That's, <laughs> that's a good one. I like it. Yeah. But yeah, it, it changed. The virus changed everything. And, uh, so yeah, we, Worms released a record where we had some big touring plans, like, uh, tours kind of booked around like the OC schedule and Justin's schedule. Um, but, um, yeah, we really didn't do much in the way of like, promoting the record or anything like that unfortunately because of the the state of the world but um yeah i really like the record though (laughs) really yeah it's it's great i'm happy with it well that's the second one though and i forgive me i i do not remember the first uh the name of the first album what was it? oh it's just it's it's literally just called flatworm so self-titled gotcha yeah yeah and that's found on a on Bandcamp. You guys have a Bandcamp, and is that where you can get the uh you guys had shirts made and the seven inch correct I believe so. Yeah, we've got. I think from Bandcamp you can order seven inch. Um, well, the first seven inch. Uh, actually, it's the only seven inch. I don't know why. I'm, no, no, we have two seven inches. Never mind. Never mind. We have. Uh, there you go. Think, yeah, yeah. All right, this is all coming back to you. I feel the coffee is like finally hitting in, and the it's finally are, after an hour. We're yeah. we're, we're in it. We're gone. We yeah, so we're like, in it. <laughs> you're thinking this guy isn't like a total idiot. He's just maybe a partial idiot. No, Tim, this has been but, fantastic, man, dude. Oh, sure. Thank you so much for being on, man. Oh, no really, worries. truly. Um, but Flatworms Bandcamp, check them out on YouTube. Uh, we've got, we've got some things up there. Great um, stuff. Sick Alps, if you haven't heard of it. Uh, and uh, this guy called Ty- I, I I hope I'm saying this right. 
Ty Seagull. Seagull? Ty Seagull, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you did some stuff with him. Around. He's around, yeah. OC's around. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully the vaccine is uh, widespread enough that touring will be a possible thing again. And uh, I would love to um, have both bands on the road. Uh, yeah, how was doing the, the, the levitation session that was recently put out? It was cool. Um, it was just really cool. Um, it, 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 was, it, it felt, it, sorry, it sorry, felt go good. Ahead, please. It felt good to play with the band after just really not – playing with, with them for so long like um um yeah it, it's it's weird when you're when you you know usually see these people like three to four times a week and you're practicing and regularly and then to just you know have months off it's uh it's kind of strange and like you know like you, you, the, the chemistry is still there but you're just like it, it's it's not the same you know and so it was yeah and it's hard so to get weird. back into i'm assuming of Absolutely. course i mean with with a yeah. constant and then a huge break what's interesting Absolutely. about those sessions that it, there was some there's some older some older songs that came out like yeah, that was yeah. that was covered which is fantastic which is i i always love to hear of course yeah um you know john sent us a, a, a songs that he wanted to do um some of them were uh you know before any of us were in the, in the group and um even john uh, surprisingly it was, <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was yeah it was uh <laughs> when, the, when the group was just bridget um yeah so, um, <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah um yeah we learned those tunes and i thought they turned out pretty well and then we did another one um for um folk yeah we did that um in big henry, henry, henry miller library henry miller library yeah, it, yeah which yeah. is also um where, where can they check that out there's i mean there's uh there's the the pressing of the of the uh sessions outside of pappy and harriet's but uh is the 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 uh henry miller library one available anywhere uh as of right now i think you can just watch the performance but i think in time i would imagine there'll be some sort of physical release of great the tunes, awesome i think um i i can't speak on that with like total certainty but yeah. i think i think there was talk of it being released i think that um that one sounds really good so i i really hope there's a physical release i've got the uh i've got the uh mp3s on my computer and i'm very very happy with them good deal but, yeah um, definitely check them out i mean uh do you guys have any other again i, I know you guys are selling those tickets to the virtual concerts is, is there any virtual concerts coming up uh, that you're aware of um i think there will be yeah uh yeah nothing is uh nothing set in stone yet but i think in time like uh we'll, we'll be doing something yeah i think just that's just how we're gonna have to be doing things until uh shows are able to resume as they as they once as they once were i, I forget about shows I, I don't know i don't know man. yeah i barely remember i barely remember i don't know i it's i've never so i never seen you at a show once tim once ever once oh I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, i've never I'm, seen you there <laughs> i'm i'm usually in hiding <laughs> I'm, I'm not i'm not the most social guy so i usually uh social anxiety really takes me over at that show so i'm usually, usually no but you were you were super nice at the at the pesos one and then uh oh thank you and then you and then you had a drink and you're just like i'm gonna fight everybody I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa it was crazy yeah yeah that's yeah. that's that's what happens <laughs> that's what happens i i get i i'm prone to acts of violence so i need to i need to hide basically it's it's, it's classic classic yeah, that it's classic. It, it, yeah it'll it'll it's gonna happen eventually of course yeah, it's, it's a it's a genetic predisposition you know so it's fine though it's fine it's yeah. there it's it's there. It's I think that's you you name it, you own it, and you you, you live it. it. You live you it. You live you live the violence. Exactly. Yeah, Tim, yeah. thank you so much for being on, man. This is such a pleasure. This is so great to thanks, have you thanks on. Thanks for man. having me. I, I don't really do many interviews, so this is uh, this is really this is a total pleasure, man. Well, we're gonna get you on again. How what? about that? Yeah, yeah, oh, man. Yeah, well, it's in the works. Next oh, year. Yes, <laughs> Next, next 2022 january oh 1st <laughs> january oh yeah let's make this tradition <laughs> yeah dude sounds, sounds yeah. Awesome. tim thank you so much just uh, real yeah, quick again you. um flatworms band camp check it out that's where you could yeah. buy everything and you get money from that and uh, and I'm, I'm assuming from from oc sales yeah, as yeah. well buy up everything you can check out melted that's a great album by tyler siegel um yeah yeah siegler siegler yeah tyler tyler siegler Tim, thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to hey, stop recording you. it, but, uh, but I'll, I'll chat with you in one second. I'll see you in a okay. second, man. Okay. Well, thank you so much.